Who is the best recruit that Ohio State signed this weekend? It was just Easter weekend. Ohio State held their their scrimmage for the, the, the student appreciation. Media was there. Students were there. You saw students with the signs. And they, not only were they signs for the current players, but they were for the recruits too. And so you had all different kinds of recruits there. You had Jordan Davison in town. You had Jet Harrison in town, the younger brother of Marvin Harrison Jr. Tons of high-level recruits. Tons of people you would want to see. Former Buckeyes, Jackson Smith and Jigba was there. It was just a massive, massive weekend for Ohio State. Not only for the players, but for the students, for the recruits, everything that was going on. And we got to cap it off with Easter. But at the end of the day, you had four guys commit to Ohio State this weekend. And we're going to take a look and see which was the best commit for Ohio State. We're not necessarily saying which was the best talent because we can go to recruiting rankings for that but which one will have the biggest impact which one has the greatest meeting for ohio state let's start with the very first commit of the weekend d-line most likely edge prospect london merit now on the on three industry rankings he is at number 165 on three industry rankings are just the version of 24 7 composites where they took it they take all of these rankings together compile them into one and kind of take the averages nobody really knows exactly what average they take from each group uh, obviously 24 7 and on threes are different that's why i'm going to give you both but at the end of the day london merit number 165 and on threes number 21 edge rusher and on threes and the number 21 player in Florida. Now, in 24-7 composite, they're a little bit higher on him. Number 101, nearly a top 100 player. The number 10 edge rusher and the number 13 player in Florida. I watched some tape of London Merritt, and I have to say, a lot of upside, he, but he does have room to develop. He needs to continue to develop, and it will take him time once he gets to Ohio State to do that. But what I love about him is how elusive he is in pass pass rush and uh, how, how elusive he is in run defense as well. He's able to stand and be with the tackles, be with the guards, and also be able to swim past them, get under them, maneuver around them so that way he can get either to the ball carrier or to the quarterback. Now the downside, he's not exactly a sack machine. You look at his stats, he doesn't have a ton of sacks, and so this is definitely an area where he's going to need to improve a little bit, but with Ohio State's focus on pass rush specialists on their staff and Larry Johnson with his ability to coach and teach the pass rushing I think that this is something where he's going to come in and he is going to have a very good fit for what Ohio State is going to want to do with him he was primarily recruited by Larry Johnson in this with a secondary recruiting by Jim Knowles as well all right our next commit was De Desi Jones or Des Jones is what a lot of people put in on three industry he was number 312 the number 44 wide receiver and the number nine player in New Jersey. In 24-7 composite, they're a little bit lower on him. 364, number 49 wide receiver in the number 10 player in New Jersey. Now, some people were questioning this. Why is Brian Heitlein going after a guy who is this low? In recruiting is it possible that he has some issues is it possible that maybe Brian Hartline isn't getting the guys that we thought he would he would well let's also remember Brian Hartline is going to go after probably four or five receivers in this year's draft class he didn't get as many as maybe they wanted last year so they're gonna to have to get a little bit more and you can't recruit all five stars but at the end of the day I think I think Des Jones is a little bit underrated. I watched some of his film, and I really liked what I saw. Really smooth in the hips when he's running his routes. His ability to cut uh, and the way he can look off defenders. I obviously, I can't do it well because I have the mic here. But his ability to, to be able to look off defenders and look one way, but then turn his hips the other way. It's just it's fantastic, and I love to see the route running ability there. He's a jab step technician is what I would call it. I mean, his, his ability to jab and step, not just right off the ball, but also in some of his post routes and how he's able to come back. There was one route that I saw where he literally posts to go onto the inside and he, and he has the safety, the corner, and the linebacker all converge and then boom, jab step to the outside, corner of the end zone, Incredible throw by the quarterback as well. I don't know who that quarterback was, but might need to figure him out as well. But an incredible throw by the quarterback to get him to the back of the corner of the end zone there. Made the catch. It was fantastic. I mean, just really good 
route running. And one thing I loved about him, he's a little bit smaller than the other guys out there, but man, was he not afraid to go over the middle. I mean, when he went into the middle of the field, it wasn't like some of those guys where they get in the middle of the field and they're kind of scared who's going to hit me, what's going to happen here. No, he, he really got himself out there, reached out for the ball. Both hands came to the ball, didn't wait back for it to come to him, but he's reaching out, going, attacking the ball, even in the middle of the field there, not afraid to catch it. And even sometimes, some guys would try to take his head off, but at the end of the day, he was able to maneuver, get around them, or take a take a hit that didn't look as bad. So Des Jones, really like him. His primary recruiter was Heartline, and his secondary recruiter is Chip Kelly as well. Let's move on to, actually, uh, a teammate of Des Jones, Deshaun Harris. Deshaun Harris, some people list him as a cornerback, some people list him as a safety. On three's industry rankings have him as a cornerback, I believe, and he is number 312, number 44 cornerback, and the number five player in New Jersey. The 24-7 composite rankings have him as a safety. He's number 289, number 24 safety, and number eight in New Jersey. Uh, he uses his hands on the receivers a lot, which I really like. Kind of handsy. Obviously, you can get in a little bit of trouble with that. But after seeing the way Davison Ingbenosin is able to do that in the college game, I actually really like what I've seen. And I think that this is an important thing because in, in the high school game, guys aren't as apt to use their hands on players sometimes. It's something that you want to be able to see because guys aren't afraid to do it. Now, obviously, you need to coach it in such a way that they don't get called for it at the next level. But it's something that personally I like to see. It shows that they're willing to get in there. And another thing thing he's super aggressive he's not afraid to hit in the run and he's also not afraid to go for some of the batted down balls which again can get you in trouble he would go after some balls that he wouldn't get wide receiver would break away and have some some good plays off that but man i mean some of the diving plays he was able to make some of the jumps he was you know he doesn't just turn his head and run if he thinks that he can jump and tap that ball away he's gonna do it there was one where he literally jumped and just really barely off his fingertips but it adjusted the ball enough that it went off the wide receiver's fingertips as well and went out of bounds and so i i like this kid i don't know if he is ever going to be a top 100 player we'll see what on three and 24 sevens rankings do but at the end of the day uh, i really like that his aggression and his mindset and if they can build off that that's going to be really really important there as well uh his primary recruiter and actually the only recruiter listed for him was og walt tim walton Finally, our final commitment of the weekend, and you all know him, T.J. Alford. T.J. Alford, the, the linebacker, uh, recruited by Jim Knowles primarily with James Laurinaitis as a secondary recruiter. I still think you probably give James Laurinaitis the credit here. He could just be working in some secondary recruiting as he's getting into the job a little bit more. But at the end of the day, on three industry has T.J. Alford, a 72 nationally, number eight linebacker, and number nine in the state of Florida. 24-7 composite is not that far off. They have him as number 63 nationally, number eight linebacker, and number eight in the state of of Florida. Uh, TJ Alford, I mean, he is aggressive and he has excellent senses. The way he's able to maneuver around the line, the way he is able to really just stick himself in there and make a play is fantastic. I love to see it. I love what I saw from him on tape. I do think he'll need about a year or two to, to develop. This isn't a guy that's going to come in and start right away. He's not some, you know, top five in the nation, five star or something like that, but he does have a lot of skills and he is a top 10 linebacker in the nation uh, in, in the 25. 2025 recruiting class so that's something you love to see he he meets ball carries really well and i don't know the, the best way i can describe this so uh i can't really show it on here but the way he's able to meet ball carriers is he he meets them like he is also the ball carrier some guys take a step back and, and you know maybe don't want to get juked out of their shoes or something like that which actually could lead you to getting more juked sometimes but he meets the ball carriers the way ball carriers meet him and what I mean by that is when he meets them he is pushing through with his hips he's not meeting them with just upper body and then getting bent back or anything like that now he, he is meeting them there and he is hitting them with his hips and really doing a good job of trying to take that running back and push him backward or stay level and go down together and uh, not lose yards by getting run over so good stuff there i love what i saw uh this is james third recruit that he's going to have attributed to him his third commitment uh if he signs it'll be his third signing that he ever has 
attributed to him. So that's really exciting for James. Peyton Pierce and Eli Lee were the other two. I don't know how Peyton Pierce got it when he was technically an analyst back then. So who knows how they're attributing that. Maybe there was something going on with one of the coaches not working there and he was filling in. I don't know. But they, at least 24-7 did attribute Peyton Pierce to James Laurinaitis. Ohio State now in the recruiting rankings. We're not even going to mention ESPN because when I looked at this, ESPN didn't even acknowledge that these four guys were in the class yet. So whatever, ESPN, they have their whole other issue to worry about with their recruiting rankings. But on three does have Ohio State as the first number one team in the nation in their recruiting rankings. 24-7 has them as second, and Rivals also has them as second. In both 24-7 and Rivals, they are behind Notre Dame, who has like 20 recruits or something like that. So obviously Notre Dame, because of the way they rank these classes, is going to be high up there. It's kind of similar to Michigan last year, where they just had a bunch of recruits, and so that got their score higher. But at the end of the day, Ohio State has the highest average of any 24-7 uh, uh, class out there right now. And that's something you really want to look at more at this time is not so much the overall score because some teams are just really cooking, getting a bunch of players like Notre Dame is, uh, getting them committed. But looking at the average score, Ohio State has the highest average score uh, per recruit. Uh, so that's something that's really important, something you love to see. And uh, we just really hope that these guys start turning into those recruiters like Devin Sanchez, since Sanchez and his parents have been doing as well so let's talk about it who was the best who was the one that's most impactful who's the one that you look at and you're like this is the best thing for Ohio State's recruiting class and I'm not going to surprise anybody here it's TJ Alford TJ Alford is the best recruit of the weekend to commit to Ohio State that doesn't mean that I think he is like head and shoulders above talented than other guys he is ranked higher than these other guys but I do think that he was the best for three reasons one it shows James Laurinaitis he's got a hot start to his recruiting. You're the third player you ever get committed slash signed to Ohio State is a top 75 linebacker or a top 75 player in the nation, top 10 linebacker. That's pretty darn good. So we'll take that. That's awesome for James Laurinaitis. He looks like he's doing well. Uh, is he as good as Walt or Hartline? Uh, remains to be seen. But even with James Laurinaitis, you don't get linebackers who have the star ratings that wide receivers and corners do. So I don't think we're ever going to see the star ratings from James Laurinaitis that we see from Brian Hartline or we see from Tim Walton. But we will see somebody who is able to fight for those top five, top three linebackers in the nation. I truly believe that he will battle for them. Uh, this defense is only going to get better with better linebacker play. And I'm not trying to say our linebackers we have now are bad by any means. No, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not saying that at all. Cody Simon's going to be great this year. I think C.J. Hicks and, and Sonny Styles are going to be really good. Gabe Powers is back there. Arvell Reese did fantastic in the scrimmage. We have good linebackers now. I'm just saying that James Laurinaitis is going to start getting his guys in here, some of the guys that he really looks at and sees maybe himself, sees what the defense needs, whatever it might be. And so once you have a uh, position coach who is dedicated to that position, finding his guys and bringing them in is really going to be special for the defense. And finally, another reason why I think this is it just always feels nice to go into Florida and grab a dude out of Florida. When you look at the other teams that were on this list, it was UCF, Florida, Miami, Florida State, and Tennessee was in there as well. But, I mean, this is a guy that the, all the Florida schools wanted. They all wanted him. They all knew this was an important guy to get, but Ohio State went down to Florida. All we got to do is keep him, right? A lot of quotes out there about how, you know, just because you have a Florida guy committed doesn't mean that you are going to have him always committed and stuff like that, especially being outside of the state of Florida. So we got to keep him committed. But at the end of the day, it feels really, really nice to go into Florida and take a guy out of there. Uh, in addition to that, Georgia had also offered him, so it feels nice. I don't know how much they were pursuing him. It didn't look like very much. But still, at the end of the day, this is a guy that they offered, and uh, he obviously chose Ohio State over very much interest in Georgia. So that's really special. Uh, and, and nearly all of the SEC, I think the only SEC teams that I didn't see offered him were Alabama and Vanderbilt, which Vanderbilt, may, you know, maybe they just knew, hey, we don't have a chance here. So at the end of the day, TJ Alford, Ohio State, Buckeye commit. Very excited about that. Very excited about what he brings, not only for the class, but also for the, the, the recruiting beginnings of James Laurinaitis as well.